Space is the final frontier. Well, that's what my mother taught me. You can look at it and see billions upon billions of stars and galaxies, all waiting to be explored, waiting to be found, each with their own individual properties and molecules, each with their own life, history, and ancient secrets, all of them out there, but simply too far away. When I was 10, however, I didn't know this to be true. I dreamed that one day I would get in my own personal space shuttle and fly out there among the stars. Just me in a vast nothingness. I'd have time to think about whatever I wanted to think about. Read every book man had written and somewhere in there I'd even write my own stories. Write about the wonders I would have been destined to see, to experience for myself. Write about other races, other cultures, interspecies communication, the first alien found. But dreams are not reality. Dreams are dreams. What real life is, is what we are presented with and have to handle. And right now, well, it will be over soon enough. They say we have 45 days until the asteroid collides with us. 45 days. Not very long when you think about it. You can't really do anything in 45 days. Well, that's a lie. You can do a lot in 45 days. For example, you could spend every cent you have traveling a world, seeing everything you have ever wanted to see, meeting all kinds of different people, experiencing all humanity's cultures and food and traditions. In 45 days, you could write a novel, write a symphony, learn a musical instrument, get a tattoo. Anyway, the list goes on. You can do a lot in 45 days. You cannot, however, make a lasting impact on the human race. And that, unfortunately, is all I've ever wanted to do. I'll never get the chance to do that now. Most people look at me and thinking they know me assume that for me, changing the world would be something like coming up with a cure for cancer. I am a scientist after all, and I do work with diseases and such. But that's not something that is important to me. Yes, I hate disease, but finding a cure wouldn't change the human race in a way that I want it to change. Sitting in this apartment, on this chair, looking straight out the window into the city I live in, with all its buildings, all its streets, all its people, I feel empty. Empty like the space above us. Kind of like the top of the dome. All the glass meets at the top and then stops, and above all that, open space stars and galaxies, and the asteroid in the distance. Every morning I wake up and I see it, all the way out there. To the eye it doesn't look like it's gotten closer, but it has, and continues to every second. In a weird way, I have respect for that asteroid. It's accomplishing something. It might not have started out as it has, but with it coming to destroy us, the universe has given it a goal. And it's going to make sure it carries out that goal. The goal has become its life. Sometimes I wish all the people thought like that. It disappoints me to see that even when we know we have limited time on something, people still don't seem to grasp that panicking and thinking about it is not going to change the fact that the event is going to occur, no matter what happens. Kind of hypocritical, really. I'm doing the exact same thing. I know I should be out there accomplishing my dreams and aspirations. I should try and beat the clock, try to change the face of Mars in the 45 days we have left. But what's the point? I know I'm going to fail. I suppose that's my challenge, however. Try to make a difference and die, or simply... die. It's closer than ever before now, almost as if it's right on top of us. It seems like it's just teasing us, tormenting us with its presence. Like a schoolyard bully pushing over who he thinks to be the weaker man just to feel the power of greatness, to laugh at him while he holds up his victim's most prized possession. Nobody goes outside anymore. Nobody wants to go outside. And who would want to, really? Six days of life left. People don't want to be reminded of that by looking up. 
They would rather stay in their homes and pretend everything is alright. Pretend like we are fine. Pretend we are going to live. I find it strange, really. When people know the end is coming, they still tend to do nothing with their lives. They live like they're going to live forever. Like the end isn't coming. Well, not me. More than half a decade ago, when they told us about the asteroid, I started my life. It's taken me this long to figure it out. So long to make it what it is, but I am at the end. And I am sure to be wiped out by the bully that looms above us. He will take my soul and my will to live, but he won't take everything. I made a machine. A machine that will send out a pulse wave when the thermal nuclear furnace of impact rearranges the molecular structure and combines it with the superheated elements of the asteroid, just as with Earth at the beginning. It's going to trigger a reaction, something that will eventually grow into something for other races and species. Where there is one, there is more. I've already said it, and at any second now, the asteroid will collide with us. I have left my mark. I am... Mars reeled from the collision as the asteroid struck. Every body and everything was destroyed. A single shock wave, making its way around the planet like a superheated scythe, and from the wasteland left in its wake, a single spark began to make its own impact at a quantum level. 